Nothing happens without leadership. Leadership determines what happens in the present and the future. True leadership is self-discovery. Leadership is inherent. It begins at the discovery of purpose. When a person finds out what they were given life to do, the leader inside of them is born. Leaders are born when they discover something more important than their personal ambition. When you pursue something more important than being with the crowd, you end up leading the crowd. Leadership is about discovering your gift within yourself and serving it to the world. Welcome everyone. This is Life Class and my name is Vanessa Treviso. I am so happy to be with my children tonight. We are family. <laughs> Praise God. You know, there are 7.7 billion people on the planet and not one of them has your fingerprint. You are an original. The law of economics says that value is determined by how rare a thing is. The more rare a thing is, the higher the value. This is why diamonds are so valuable. They are rare. Pearls are very rare. That's what makes them so valuable. Gold and silver, they are rare. And they have a high value attached to them. So when things are common, the value falls. See, when you have a lot of the same thing, it becomes cheap. So God made a decision when he created you. You are an economic decision. God said, I will make sure that you are permanently valuable. I will give you something that is completely rare. You are the only one of your kind. There ain't nobody else like you. No other human being has your fingerprint. You are high in value. Come on, tell yourself, I am valuable. Say to yourself, I am valuable. This is why you should never imitate other people. Imitations are cheap. Cheapo. <laughs> so be yourself. Protect your value. Be yourself. That's who God created you to be. You. So listen, if someone says to you, you are different. That's a compliment. You should be very happy. <laughs> Praise God. Let's pray. Merciful Father, thank you for every individual here each one unique, important, special, different, valuable, and cold. We praise you for you have designed us to be a blessing to our generation. You are the living and true God. I ask you to touch us, change us, permanently rearrange us. Give us understanding through your Holy Spirit. Teach us how valuable we are, how important we are to you and your program. May each one of us discover the truth about ourselves and about your plan. Fill us with revelation. Transform us by the renewing of our thinking. Destroy our ignorance with your knowledge. Fill us with truth that will permanently change us in our hearts, Lord. Do this, Lord, by your revelation, by your power. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, get ready to take good notes. Tonight, we are going to continue this series on the original leadership philosophy of God. I'm going to be focusing on leadership from a kingdom perspective. Now, this is a leadership class and so what I want to do is talk to you about discovering your personal leadership. 
Write that down, please. That's our topic tonight. Discovering your personal leadership. The number one need of the 21st century world is proper leadership. Every condition of our families, our communities, our workplace, and the dire conditions of humanity is the result of poor leadership. Leadership determines everything. Nothing happens without leadership. Nothing. Nada. Leadership determines what happens in the present and the future. History is simply what leaders did or did not do. So if we don't get leadership right, nothing is right. Nothing changes without leadership. Nothing. If it's a country, a community, a company, nothing changes without leadership. Nothing is corrected without leadership. If something is wrong, leadership needs to take action. Nothing develops without leadership. Nothing advances without leadership. People's lives and things in their environment remain static without the presence of leadership. Nothing improves without leadership. If you want things to change, if you want your country to improve, if you want an organization or a company to improve, if you want your family to improve, it must begin with leadership. You know, whenever there is an invitation for a leadership conference or a leadership class like this, most people respond to that invitation with the attitude, that is not for me. That response is proof that your culture has done an excellent job in canceling who you are. You were drawn here by the Spirit of God because there's something He really wants and he needs you to get it for him. You are pregnant with purpose. Discovery of your purpose means to find out what you were born to do. And it's like conceiving a divine assignment from God. It's this thing you know you were born to do. You've got to fix this thing on earth. You've got to solve this problem. It's like a pregnancy. Even though other people can't see it. It keeps growing. My question is, what's growing on the inside of you? Now, I know you are in school, or I know you've got a job, but what are you pregnant with? You know, pregnant people go to work, and the baby goes with them. And sometimes the folks around you don't know you're pregnant. They think you are like them. They are barren. You know, this is a small group, and I expected you and only you. Crowds don't impress me. My real love is people like you who believe this is for you. You are not like them. Do you know why you are here? Your destiny brought you here to this meeting. Because I believe there are people here who want to do better. Men and women who want to do more than earn a paycheck and collect a pension. You don't want to miss the best God has for you. You are different. You know, Jesus didn't like crowds. He didn't trust them because he understood the strategy for changing the world, which is not big meetings. It's small groups committed to intensive training and transformation. Jesus chose 12 people. Can you imagine someone who came to change the world only chose 12 people? And his only focus with them was leadership development. He started with raw material, which means these 12 specimens had no formal training in leadership. And you know, I think his strategy was smart because he chose businessmen. He chose business people 
and they were professional people. Matthew was an accountant. He worked for a CPA firm. Luke was a physician. He worked in the medical field. Peter, James, and John operated a fishing business. They were the owners of a company in the top business industry. The number one business of that day was fishing in that village around Galilee. You know, I like business people. Religious people are problems. So Jesus chose people who were working. These were business people because he wanted to produce leaders. You know, leaders never trust crowds. Big crowds, they just want to be entertained. You know, there are people in this generation who go to some music concert. They pay money to buy a ticket. They leave home. Sometimes they, they'll drive or even fly to get to the venue. And they sing songs until they lose their voice. And then they go home. You won't find leaders at rock concerts. These folks get entertained and return to the same old ordinary life. Nothing has changed. And this is what's happening in the church. Big meetings, no transformation. The people are still dead in their spirits. But it's the ones who get up early to come to these sessions. The ones who have to catch the bus so they can be on the internet to tune in. The ones who travel a distance to meet with me or to hear me preach somewhere. Those are the real people. Those are the ones I believe. Those are the people who God will spend his time with and give them what they expected and more. So one time, the crowd grew too much. A multitude of people who were following Jesus, they stayed with him for three days and they were hungry. And Jesus made sure they were fed. By the end of the journey, 70 people joined him. Now imagine growing from 12 to 70 people in three days. You would be excited, but Jesus was not. He was suspicious. He understood big crowds. They are not interested in changing. They are only interested in feeding. He asked them, why do you follow me? Now, normally, if you are a pastor and your church grew by 70% in one day, you wouldn't ask that question. You would thank them for coming. Let me ask you the same question. Why do you follow Jesus or God? When Jesus asked his followers, he knew the answer, saying, I know why you follow me. Isn't it because of the fish and bread I fed you? Jesus knew the motives of their hearts. There are people who just want the miracles. They don't want to change. Miracles never change people. The children of Israel saw more miracles than anyone else in the Bible, and at the end they were still cursing God. Jesus said, If you seek for a miracle, you are a wicked and adulterous generation. Jesus said, I know why you are with me. You want free handouts from me. You just want welfare. Christ says, if you want to follow me, be my disciple. You must stop looking for the fish and bread and feed on me. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. The Bible says when the 70 heard this, they said, we must eat your flesh and drink your blood. And feed on you? This is crazy. They murmured amongst themselves and they looked at each other and said, This is a hard saying, meaning you are demanding too much. You want us to look to you for our livelihood? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. 
The Bible says, after he said this, they forsook him and walked away. Imagine losing 70% of your followers in one day. It can happen. Now, what's so intriguing and impressive to me is what he did when they left. It was a leadership act. Jesus turned to the 12. You aren't leaving too, are you? In other words, are you just like them? He also meant, I will do this by myself. One of the most important aspects of leadership is finding something worth doing by yourself. If you need people to like you and approve of you, for you to do what you are doing, you are not a leader yet. You are a politician. Jesus was willing to go alone. Now the Bible says Peter spoke up. Now I'm going to paraphrase what Peter said. Rabbi, which means master teacher. We think you are crazy too. You too are a little bit weird, but in you we have found the words that give us life. Peter, what he was really saying is, you make sense to us. The words you have spoken to us give our lives meaning. We had our own company and our business was doing well, but you have shown us that we can do more than just business. We can change the world. And by the way, that's what leaders do. Leaders give people's lives meaning. That's why they follow you. People will follow you when they receive a sense of significance for their own lives. When Jesus saw Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother, Andrew, they were out fishing. And Jesus said, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And the Bible says, at once they left their nets and followed him. Notice it says, at once they left. Peter and the other disciples left their boats, their businesses, their jobs, their homes, everything to follow Jesus, who leads you to your purpose, your real life. Your purpose connects you with who you are. The very essence of life is to find God's purpose and fulfill it. God wants you to fulfill your destiny for his sake. You will never find your destiny hanging out in the crowd. You spend too much time with other people. Listen to me. Your purpose will talk to you if you are quiet enough. Great people always find their destiny in solitude. Mother Teresa, she went out to the streets of Calcutta and visited the slums. She met families and children, the hungry and the sick. And she was angry at what she saw. And one day, while she was sitting on a train by herself, she said she was inspired by God. She got her call to her real work. And it became the driving force of her life. Purpose is the driving force of our lives. Here's a few things to write down. Number one, leadership is ignited by a purpose. Purpose is the reason you were born. Purpose is why you are here. You were given life for a purpose. Leadership is inherent. It begins at the discovery of purpose. When a person finds out what they were given life to do, the leader inside of them is born. Your purpose and destiny is whatever makes you angry. Write that down. Your anger is your purpose. Whatever makes you angry is the problem you were born to solve. You were born to solve a problem on earth. You were born to meet a need in your generation. No human being was born to pay bills. 
No human being came to planet Earth just to breathe oxygen, eat food, sleep, and pay light bills. Everyone came to Earth with an assignment of something that God needed done in their generation. You were not born to make a living. You were born to make a difference. Manifest what's been trapped inside of you since birth. This is why you really don't surrender your life to Jesus to go to heaven. You give your life to Christ so you can manifest yourself on earth. This is what I call the call for leadership. Because God calls ordinary people to fulfill their purpose and do the extraordinary. And that's why we are here in this leadership class. Over the course of the next few weeks, from now until the end of the year, you will learn leadership secrets, leadership principles of true leadership. You are going to learn a different set of values for relationships and the mentality of true leaders. These sessions are designed to help you discover your personal leadership and become the blessing to your generation that you were destined to be. I guarantee if you listen to me very carefully, you are going to be transformed as a person. By the end of this year of 2018, you should become a different person than who you are right now. But you have to listen. Feed on me just a little bit, okay? Because what I'm teaching you is what I live. And it begins with discovering your personal leadership. Leadership does not begin with people. It begins with you first. Vision is buried in purpose. Can you write that down? Vision is buried in purpose. So when you are able to see your purpose, your vision will come to life. Leaders are born when they begin to see the unseen. That's vision. Mother Teresa captured a vision of what she had to do. That's when the leader is born. Whenever you decide to become yourself, you become lonely. Because everyone around you wants you to be like them or to be them. So when you discover who you are and your value and decide to be your true self to achieve what you're dreaming, loneliness is the result. Every true vision only has one believer first. That's what makes it lonely. You have to invest in your dream alone before anyone will want to join you. What attracts people to you is when they see you pursuing your vision And that you don't care if you're lonely. Then when people join you and latch on to the vision, you're not alone. Leaders live a lonely life. If you're always around people, that means you're one in the crowd. Leaders choose loneliness. You have to choose to be alone if you're going to change the world. You know, I have been alone most of the time. I'm lonely right now. A leader is always lonely because they are out front and there is no one out there with them. Every great leader knows what it's like to be lonely. Moses, Jesus, and Paul, they all spent time in the desert alone. Your following is easy. Being a leader comes with a price. The world is not going to hand it to you. You will have to pay the price. When you pursue something more important than being with the crowd, you end up leading the crowd. You cannot lead if you are trapped by the followers. Being a leader means you have to be out front. You can't lead from the back. You cannot lead an orchestra unless you turn your back to the crowd. Okay, I have a few things for you to write down. 
Here is the philosophy of leadership taught by Jesus. Number one, trapped in every follower is a hidden leader. This is one of my favorite statements. Now, these are philosophical statements, but they are very important. Because leadership begins with your belief. And your belief system determines your philosophy of life. The truth is, everyone was born to lead, but most die following. If you never discover the leader trapped on the inside, the world will never know who you really are. Number two, every human being was born to lead. Say it with me. Every human being was born to lead. Now that's a shocking statement to you because you've been trained to believe that only an elite group of people were born to lead. This philosophy disturbs us because we believe that we were not born to lead and that only special people were born to lead, but not us. So we are afraid of the idea. But the Bible is very different in philosophy. The Bible's philosophy is that every human is born to lead in an area of gifting. And that gift makes you a leader. The gift. So you were born to lead by serving that gift to your generation. Every human being came to earth with a gift. When you discover that gift and you serve that gift to your generation, they call you a leader. This is why true leaders never seek leadership. If you study the great influential people of the world, and I'm talking about truly influential people, you will discover that none of them desired to be a leader. Mother Teresa was a school teacher, but she spoke to the United Nations. How do you go from a classroom to addressing the United Nations? Just a simple nun, a woman of small stature, just five feet tall, who never took a course in leadership. But when she spoke, her leadership commanded the attention of world leaders. She discovered her gift, a passion for the poor. Teaching was not her gift. She left her job to fulfill her life work. Your work is not your job. There's a difference between your job and your work. Your job, your employment, is what they pay you to do. Your work is what you were born to do. There's a difference. Your job, your employment, is a skill. But your work is your gift. You can learn your job, but you were born with your work. Your purpose is your life's assignment. That's your work. Your purpose will always pay you more than your job. You will never become wealthy from your job. You become prosperous from your work. The measure of wealth is determined by the assignment. If you don't find God's will, you will never attract the wealth you were supposed to have. You see, leaders don't have a job. Why? They found their work. Life is a leader's career. Leaders have assignments. In other words, leaders are always on assignment, carrying out their life work. They can fire you from your job, but they can never fire you from your work. This is why only those who have discovered their work will survive the crisis. Bill Gates doesn't have a job. He found a gift. Steve Jobs didn't have a job at Apple Computer. He found a gift. Steve Jobs was a leader, and he dropped out of college. Who's this? This picture here of this man. This is Gandhi. Gandhi was an educated man. He had a law degree. So did Nelson Mandela. They were both lawyers. And then they discovered something more important 
than working at a law firm. These men were leaders, and they never took a course in leadership. The world doesn't love and admire them because of their education. We remember them for what they did for their generations. Mother Teresa was a leader, and she never studied leadership. You studied leadership, and nobody knows you. Why? Because leadership is not a technique. Leadership is not about methods, management, or organizational skills. You don't learn leadership. You discover it in yourself. Leadership is about discovering your gift within yourself and serving it to the world. Leadership is not about controlling people. Write that down. Study all true leaders. Bill Gates never controlled people. Steve Jobs never oppressed people. Mother Teresa never dominated people. Gandhi never manipulated people. Nelson Mandela never controlled people. But you, you love to control people. I'm the boss. Sit down. I'm in charge. Do this. Do that. Go there. Come here. See? That's not a leader. That's an insecure person. You were born to be a leader, but not over people. You were created to be a ruler, but not to rule over people. You were born to be a controller, but not a controller of people. You were created to be a manager, but not a manager of people. Your greatness is in your gift and serving of that gift to your generation. Any form of leadership that intimidates, inhibits, hinders, restricts, obstructs, oppresses, manipulates, or frustrates is not leadership. Let me give you the best definition of leadership. Now, it's very simple, yet complicated. Write this down. True leadership is a product of inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. Leadership is the capacity to influence others through inspiration, not manipulation. And that inspiration comes from a passion that which is motivated by a sense of vision and a sense of purpose. Leadership is first personal and then it's corporate. Leadership is one of the most historically studied arts in history. It goes all the way back to the times of Moses, when Moses himself was seen as one of the greatest leaders of history. If you would study the leaders who changed the world, beginning with people like Moses, you may find that they all have something in common. Moses was on the job. He was employed by his father-in-law, tending livestock, employment. So he thinks he's a shepherd. That's what I do. That's my job. Then he meets his manufacturer. The manufacturer says to him, you are the deliverer and the leader of a million people. You are also an author of the first five books of the Bible. You are the leader of a labor force. You are a lawgiver for all the nations of the world. They are going to borrow your laws that you introduced and they're going to use them in their constitutions. His answer, you must be talking to somebody else. Mo had a hard time believing that's who he was born to be, a leader. God never created a follower. 
That's an important statement. When God created Adam, he created a leader, not a follower. God gave Adam authority, dominion. That's what he created. And God commanded him to dominate the whole planet. So God created a dominator. And God told him to reproduce himself and fill the whole earth with his species. So we are a species of leaders. We were created to rule, created to lead. Now that's difficult for you to believe. And I know because it was difficult for me to believe because I was brainwashed by the fall of man. I had to understand the Bible to discover this. And the Bible is a leadership handbook. So when Adam disobeyed God, he did not lose the ability of leadership. He lost the mentality of leadership. So I call the human race a kingdom of ignorant kings. They don't know who they are. We lost touch with our true reality. We don't know who we are and that ignorance is destroying us. As a matter of fact, humanity is not destroyed because of the devil. Humanity is not destroyed because of sin. According to the government of heaven, we are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. The prophet Hosea recorded chapter 4 verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you. These are the words of God. Now, what does he mean? Wherever you are experiencing destruction, personally, financially, relationally, is related to your level of ignorance. My people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. So we need to destroy ignorance. The only solution to ignorance is information. Knowledge. Knowledge of the truth. Because not all knowledge is truth. Jesus said, You shall know the truth and the truth that you know will set you free. Write this down. You were created to lead and designed to dominate. Say that with me. I was created to lead and designed to dominate. Those words are very powerful. You have to get this into your spirit. You don't evolve into a leader. You were created to be one. The manufacturer had leadership in mind when he created you. But look at what they've done to you. They've made you an employee. And they told you where you can be employed and where you cannot be employed. And then they restrict how far you can rise in that employment. What have they done to you? They tell you how to live and you obey their rules. They have reduced you to an employee when God says you were born to be a deployee. And you wonder why you are frustrated at your job. You wonder why Mondays make you sick. When Monday morning comes around, you are so stressed. Your blood pressure goes up. And these secret cells multiply and develop into tiny growths that turn into tumors that make you sick. And you can't seem to figure out why life isn't getting better. They told you that you are a follower and you believe them. It's because nobody has challenged the system. This philosophy that I'm teaching you is not new. It's as old as God. True leadership 
is self-discovery. Can you write that down? What did I say? True leadership is self-discovery. True leadership begins with an individual discovering themselves. That's when it really begins. And you will never become a true leader until you are introduced to yourself. Do you know why I'm here to speak to you tonight? I'm here to introduce you to yourself. What you are doing is embarrassing to God. What you are proud of, God is ashamed of. What you settle for is a shock to heaven. I know because I was there. You have to discover something. That's where leadership begins. It begins with self-discovery. Leadership is not something you pursue. It's something you discover. Leaders are born when they discover something more important than their personal ambition. True leaders do not seek followers. Leaders are actually pursuing a passion towards a purpose that gives them a sense of destiny. Nelson Mandela never sought followers. He discovered a purpose that was more important than his private ambition and private preservation. He pursued that purpose privately, and it attracted people. Leaders don't seek followers. Followers are attracted to leaders. Your leadership attracts people. Leaders are more concerned with discovering a purpose to improve the life of humanity than their own personal ambition. So they sacrifice themselves to accomplish something for the greater good. And we find that very rarely. Most people we call leaders are professional manipulators And they are actually concerned more with their own promotion than promoting the people. True leaders don't maintain followers. They develop leaders. Most people in leadership don't want anybody else to lead because they are so insecure. They don't want any competition. But I love Jesus because he by far, I believe, is the greatest leader of all time that ever walked the earth. Jesus introduced a leadership philosophy based on different values. Jesus never sought power. He empowered his disciples. Write that down. Leaders never seek power. They love to empower. I love what Jesus said. It's better for you that I go away. Because if I don't leave, you won't do greater works. His perception was, if I stay, I would be preventing those behind me to become greater than I am. Successful leadership is about mentoring and succession. The most important aspects of leadership that is ignored by leaders is the need to replace yourself. And this is why we have leaders, even in in third world countries, the average age of leadership is 78 years old. Now that's a poor commentary of a lack of mentoring and succession programs. A great leader is one who works himself out of a job. True leaders, actually one of the first decisions they make is to identify their replacement and start to train them. We need leaders who are not concerned about their own position, but providing someone to take it. This is why we need to pass it on. Leadership is about successful transition. Leadership is a relay, not a marathon. A marathon only has one winner. In a relay, the victory is given to the team. Leadership 
is about how do you pass the baton successfully. You don't hang on to the baton and die with it. Jesus Christ is the greatest relay runner of all time. He was 33 when he transferred the baton. God wants us to pass it on. You need to recognize where you are in the race and learn to appreciate the value of getting rid of the baton and do it before you die. Was this good? Did you learn something? It's important because every time you learn something new, you change. Everyone stay with me. Don't leave. Never be in a hurry to leave a king's presence. That's in the Bible. I want to just close with this to give you an invitation to the Global Academy of Leadership. This is part of my kingdom assignment. This is something that is being provided to those of you that uh, are interested in discovering your purpose. One of the first things that you will study in the school is discovering your purpose as a leader. And so the first principle uh, or law of life that we study is purpose. And we study the nature of purpose. And so if you're interested in learning more about this, just send me an email to livemesmerized at gmail.com. It's there on the screen. And I'll send you some more information about the opportunity.